Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. It has been another very unsettled week, and in particular, Storm Kieran led to severe disruption in places. Now, is there a change on the way as we head through the next 14 days? Let's start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 7th of November. And at the outset, it's the Atlantic which is dominating things. There is a weak ridge of high pressure just topping across the UK, reducing the number of showers around. But all in all, it looks quite a mixed outlook. So as I run this, what we see is a band of rain pushes eastwards across all areas. Low pressure stays close by them and dives southeastwards. And into the weekend, for some signs here have been drier for a time. And as a weak ridge of high pressure topples across the country, that could have a few impacts, which I'll look at a little bit later. But continuing the sequence through to its end, further wet weather moves across all areas eventually into the early part of next week. It's windy as well, the tightly packed isobars there indicating that. And we finish at 03 GMT under the influence of the Atlantic still. In fact, it's very dominant at this point of west or southwesterly flow perhaps beginning to manifest itself. So changeable or unsettled through week one, if this is correct. Here's the jet stream and air temperature sequence. The uh, same time frame, the mottled shading shows where the jet stream is heading and the UK is somewhere around here. So not a good location if it's dry weather that you're hoping for. Running this, what we see is the jet often stays close to the UK and the blue shading indicating the cold air generally remains to the north. At the very end here, there's quite a lot of cold air over Scandinavia. But I think the other thing to take on board is that there is more of a southwest to northeasterly tilt beginning to show up here. That could suggest somewhat higher temperatures, at least in the south and the southeast. So winds may be starting to go into more of a southwesterly direction, as I was hinting at the end of the first animation. But let's have a look at some of the temperature forecasts associated with those sequences. So 15 GMT, Wednesday the 8th, very close to the average, really. Single figures in the north, quite chilly, milder in the southeast and East Anglia, but not especially so, very close to the norm. Forwards to Saturday, once more, forecast maximum, single figures everywhere coldest in the north, fairly close to the average, perhaps at this point a little bit below it. Forwards to Tuesday, and according to the GFS model run, it has turned significantly warmer in central and southeastern England, East Anglia. When I say warmer, I think at this time of year, probably milder is more appropriate, but temperatures are pushing towards 13, 14, 15 Celsius as winds go into more of a southwesterly direction. Still cooler there in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and northern England. Now, into a weekend, as I suggested, there could be a ridge of high pressure, keeping things drier for a time, but there is uncertainty about just how quickly weather fronts are going to be pushing in from the Atlantic. But the UKV model indicates that the timing of those may allow quite a widespread frost to develop. Saturday forecast minimums here. Freeze fours five Celsius across much of the UK, so ground frost quite possible if sky's clear. Also in the north there, and maybe in Northern Ireland, temperatures dipping a little bit lower. Forwards to Sunday, the second chart there, and this is really when we've got outbreaks of rain and cloud associated with them pushing up from the southwest, and the timing of those will determine just how widespread the frost, frost risk will be on Saturday night into Sunday morning. But this shows temperatures dipping down to or a little bit below freezing point in much of the north and the east. So just taking those two together, it's possible that even parts of the south will experience their first, well, I would say widespread frost of the autumns. Still quite a lot of places in some Britain haven't seen a frost, but it will depend on skies clearing and particularly on Saturday night and Sunday morning, whether or not that cloud and rain starts pushing up from the southwest a little bit quicker or a little bit more slowly than these charts are suggesting. I mentioned that towards the end of the first week was a vigorous Atlantic flow still dominating things and it's worth keeping an eye on because the Mogreps G wind gust chart here for Plymouth is just 
indicating towards the end there, the first week for a few of the runs are going for very, very strong wins indeed. A couple there going over the 70 mile an hour marker. I think that suggests a low chance because only two of the runs in the ensemble model are predicting it, but it is definitely something to keep an eye on. And I'm not going to show the comparable chart for London on this update, but there are a few runs in there which are also going for 60 mile an hour gusts or around about towards the end of week one with that vigorous flow pushing in from the Atlantic. So keep an eye on the short range forecasts. Rainfall. The aggregate charts here from ECM and GFS for days 0 to 5. The really important point to take on board is the distribution of rain. Both of these have the highest totals in the west, and that's more typical than has been the case in recent weeks when it's often been in the south and the east and the northeast. The totals also quite a lot lower than has been the case recently in much of the UK, but there will, of course, be rain around. The 0 to 10 day chart, so this is aggregating the 5 to 10 day period and adding it onto the previous ones. Once more, the orange shading and the green shading, which indicates where the greatest amounts of rain have been predicted, is focused on the west of the United Kingdom. So Western Wales, northwest parts of Britain and Northern Ireland. There is a difference there. The GFS chart on the whole looks to be wetter than the ECM one, which is on the left. But the, the, the key point really is that distribution back to normal if these are right. Now, in more general terms, do the deterministic models support that trend? Here is the GFS on Tuesday, the 14th of November, and for our indications here of high pressure beginning to build up from the south, more of a southwesterly flow starting to develop. And this is the sort of thing which I would be keeping an eye on as we head towards the winter, because the Azores high pressure does tend to like to migrate into continental Europe and take up residency for the winter months. That's been quite a common pattern in recent decades especially, and it leads to mild conditions across most of Western Europe for long spells during the heart of the winter months. It is just, just something to keep an eye on it to see whether that tendency uh, develops as we head through the coming weeks. The Canadian model, Low pressure there over Scotland, high pressure to the southwest, and quite a changeable picture, as was the GFS, despite the signal for high pressure to be building from south. The uh, German icon model also has a high pressure maybe starting to move towards continental Europe, but all in all, it's changeable. The ECM, high pressure to the south, an Atlantic flow there, so keeping things changeable across the United Kingdom. So reasonable consistency here. And finally, the UK Met Office. It has quite a nasty area of low pressure, actually, just to the northwest here. So it's, an, it's quite an unsettled pitch, picture. Maybe some milder air there pushing into the southeastern corner as well. But taking all those together, a more typical pattern than the one we've really had recently. It's still changeable or perhaps unsettled even. But the wettest conditions tending to be in the west and the northwest and consistent with those rain charts which I showed from the ECM and GFS models. And as I say, really, this is often the sort of thing which tends to develop in the UK as we head towards the winter months. So do keep an eye on whether this pattern becomes embedded and persistent. How are things shaping up as we head into the second week? Well, just the general direction of travel here, so trends and probabilities rather than specifics. Here is the GEFS um, air temperature and precipitation risk chart for London. Week two here, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, often slightly above the thick black line, the 30 year average. So air temperatures at 1500 meters, close to or above the norm through this period generally. There is something of a dip around here, so maybe one or two chillier days there, but all in all, fairly close to the average or above it. In terms of rain risk, well, it is ongoing for a spikes continuing to appear there, but for a fewer of them, certainly than have been recently, dry periods 
do look likely so not particularly wet in the southeast temperatures down at the ground level quite a lot of yellow there through the first couple of days which is showing forecast maximums of between 11 and 15 celsius so a mild start to the second week which really ties in with what i was talking about there being more of a southwesterly tilt towards the end of the first week and into the second later on the light greens increase those are runs going for between six to ten celsius so close to the average or maybe one or two of them a little bit below it of course but there's also a lot of yellow showing up there the 11s to 15 so putting that together i would say through the second week temperatures down at ground level close to or above the average and more likely than below it on most days at least up to manchester very similar in terms of air temperatures but there are more rain spikes here from the Wormley london chart so it's a wetter picture Two meter temperatures, there's more light green, but even so, a reasonable amount of yellow, it decreases there towards the end, but temperatures close to the norm, I would suggest, in the northwest, maybe above it on some days as well. The final one of these up to Glasgow. There is a little bit of a difference here in the air temperature profile because I think it's close to the average, the thick purple line on some mean there, staying close to the thick black line. Also, there are certainly more rain spikes and they are bigger than on the other two plots. So this is the wettest looking of the three charts, which I've shown and again, just reinforcing the message. Two meter temperatures for Glasgow, lots of light green early on. The amount of dark green shading there increases later. Those are the runs going for focus maximums of between one and five Celsius. So probably very close to the average here, maybe even a little bit below it on some days. So definitely that more typical temperature profile across the United Kingdom, above average, most likely in the southeast and East Anglia, close to or below it increases as you head further north and northwest there on these, on these, uh, tab on these plots and tables. What about the frost risk? Here's the chart for Nottingham through week two. It's the dark greens which really indicate the chance of frost. So I would describe it as moderate. And of course, at this time of year, that's not at all unusual. The nights are now very long. Clear periods will allow temperatures to drop quite sharply if the winds are light as well, of course. So nothing notable here. There's only a little bit of blue showing up there at the very end. Those are runs which are going for uh, naught Celsius or lower. Down to Berkhamsted to assess the risk in the south. It's a little bit lower than in Nottingham, but not particularly so. But all in all, nothing at all unusual there for the middle part of November. I would actually say that on balance, the frost risk is below the average for this time of the year. Rain through days 8, 9, 10. These are the ECM ensemble probability charts. Once more, the thing to take on board is a distribution, the orange shading reverting to the west of the United Kingdom. So an Atlantic flow being signaled here. Drier conditions are more likely in the east and especially the southeast. And that's reinforced through days 11, 12 and 13. Uh, quite a high chance of significant rain there in the west, the northwest, but as I say, a significantly lower one in central and eastern parts of England. So the Atlantic is dominating through this period. High pressure may be having more influence in the south and the southeast. And the GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday, the 17th of November, reinforces that message. High pressure here, building up from the south, the southwest. It's more likely to be keeping things dry in the southern half of the United Kingdom than it is in the north, where disturbances are continuing to push in from the west. So really a very, very typical pattern which is being shown here. The mean surface level pressure data table for York. So now going through the second week, quite a bit of yellow there starting to show up. Also some orange. Those runs going for between 1,026 and 1,040 millibars. The thing here is that if high pressure builds up from the south or southwest and extends far enough northwards, it could lead to an increasing chance of nighttime frosts in the southern half of the United Kingdom. Even daytime temperatures may be suppressed if fog forms overnight and lingers well into the day. But it is something to keep an eye on. 
through the second week, I think the chance of that scenario is relatively low. More often than not, what we tend to see is high pressure builds up from the southwest, maybe across southern Britain, but not far north enough to cut off the Atlantic's flow and not far north enough to lead to the sort of dry and calm and clear conditions which uh, can give the sharp frosts increasingly as we head towards the winter months. So I think it's just a relatively low chance. Is there any sign of anything colder? Well, here's the Northern Hemisphere view from the ECM model, Friday the 17th of November. It's not from the ensemble, it's just a deterministic snapshot. And I wanted to show it because there are indications here of high pressure from the southwest building into Scandinavia, and that is the type of thing which would lead to the pattern that I've just described, a growing chance of frost and lower daytime temperatures where, uh, where fog lingers in particular. Quite a low chance of it happening. Now, the GFS model at the same time also has high pressure building up from the south. There is an area of high pressure there to the northeast as well. So it's not entirely out of a question that something cooler or colder could develop. But at this point, it's really a southwesterly flow moving up across the UK. And I, I really think we'd be struggling to see much in the way of frost from this type of scenario. So to summarize, week one, changeable, some drier interludes, but also wet and windy periods. Temperatures often close to the average, but there is that risk of frost in the north and through the weekend, it may extend southwards. But uncertainty about the timing of cloud and rain pushing up from the southwest. Week two, changeable wettest in the northwest and driest in the southeast, so very typical in terms of the distribution of rainfall. Temperatures mostly close to or even above the average, and that's more true in the south and the southeast than it is in the north, where there is that risk at least of it being somewhat cooler or even colder at times. But I put a note there, there is a chance of high pressure building far enough northwards to bring an increasing risk of frost and fog. But on balance, I really do think that is quite low at this stage, but not something to be discounted. So uh, there we have it. Changeable sums it up. The rain distribution returning to a much more typical pattern with the wettest conditions in the west, the driest in the southeast and east Anglia. Also, just that low risk, at least in my view, which is based on the current data, of high pressure building far enough northwards through the second week to lead to increasingly frosty conditions. But that is something perhaps to keep an eye on. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, and as ever, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember to keep up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.